Today we're going to quickly review the basics of numerical integration using the trapezoidal rule. As always, this is a review video, so we're not going to hit all the minute details. This is just a summary of what we learned earlier this week. The trapezoidal rule is one of many numerical integration schemes. You might have heard of Riemann sums from your calculus class. If you recall, Riemann sums approximate the integral using a bunch of rectangles. You probably haven't heard of Simpson's rules. Simpson's rules use what's called an interpolating polynomial to integrate the data. The trapezoidal rule is similar to Riemann sums, but instead of using rectangles, it uses trapezoids. I hope this is obvious from the name. There are three main flavors of the trapezoidal rule. The first is using just one trapezoid across a region. This is known as a single application of the trapezoidal rule. You can also divide a region into multiple equally spaced segments and apply the trapezoidal rule in each segment. This is called the composite trapezoidal rule. And finally, you can do something similar as a composite trapezoidal rule if you take your region and divide it into multiple unequally spaced segments. This is called the trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data. On a side note, be careful with notation. I've seen many good sources use these three terms interchangeably. While it's not technically wrong to do so, it can cause confusion because it contradicts the very specific terminology we're using in this class. If you're going to use an external source, please be sure to understand the ins and outs of their notation. The trapezoidal rule uses a trapezoid to approximate the integral, so we need to know what the area of a trapezoid is. If you recall, it's just the base times the average height of its sides. Following the notation used in this diagram, the base is just b minus a. The height of the left side is f of a, and the height of the right side is f of b, so the average height is just the average of f of a and f of b. Therefore, we can write the integral approximation as b minus a times f of a plus f of b over 2. The components of the equations are color-coded to geometrically indicate the base and the average height. This is the premise of every variation of the trapezoidal rule. Let's look at the composite trapezoidal rule, which is the next variation. Instead of approximating this entire region using just one trapezoid like we did in the last slide, we can separate the region into individual pieces and apply the trapezoid rule to each piece, then sum the results. It's important to note that each segment must be equally spaced. The composite trapezoidal rule is an extremely logical option when you need to integrate a data set or something discretized. There are six data points in this figure, which means we can form five regions and therefore use five trapezoids. A general rule is that you can form n minus one trapezoids if you have n data points. By definition, the composite trapezoidal rule uses equally spaced segments. We can calculate what the spacing is based on the endpoints of the interval and the number of data points. We divide the base of the entire region, b minus a, by the number of data points, n, to get the base of each segment, h. OK, so we know what h is for each segment. We just need to compute the average height of each segment. Well, the average height for this region in the far left is just f of x0 plus f of x1 over 2. So the integral is just that times h. We can repeat this process for the four remaining sections. If we generalize this to n segments, we get the following equation. Let's break this down. In the bracketed term, we add the two endpoints f of x0 and f of xn to 2 times the interior points. Why 2 times the interior points? Well, if you think about it, we're applying the trapezoid rule in every segment, so the interior points will be double counted when you move from one segment to another. After we compute this bracketed term, we multiply it by h over 2. This is just another way to restate that the area of a trapezoid is the base times the average height, just in a slightly different form. Because the interior points are weighted twice as much as the endpoints, it's important to make sure that the data in the middle of your dataset is as good as it can be. Otherwise, you'll throw off the accuracy of the integral estimate. Let's look at the last variation of the trapezoid rule, the trapezoid rule for unequal segments. There are many parallels to the composite trapezoidal rule. First, we are still splitting our n data points into n minus 1 segments and applying the trapezoid rule in each. But this time, the segments aren't equally spaced. This commonly happens in practice and you pretty much never get to choose the spacing. 
When you collect data, sometimes you won't always receive the data at a uniform rate, like the ones in this figure. If we follow the process from the composite trapezoidal rule, we arrive at this equation. This basically says the integral estimate is just the sum of all the trapezoids from each section. h of i is the base of each section, and this quantity is the average height of each section. If you use a constant hi, this equation reduces to the composite trapezoidal rule equation from two slides ago. The interior points are still weighted twice as heavily as the endpoints because you're still double counting the inside edges when you're moving from trapezoid to trapezoid. It's just not visibly apparent in this formula. Numerical methods should not be used in your work unless you understand the consequences of the error they induce. First, we should think about the base case, a single application of the trapezoidal rule. You strap a straight line between two points and compute that area. Therefore, if we have a function such that the second derivative equals zero, the trapezoidal rule yields an exact answer. This should be intuitive since the second derivative of a straight line is zero. Unfortunately, most real-world functions aren't as simple as a straight line. Without going into all the glorious math, the trapezoidal rule is what we call on the order of h squared. This means the error is proportional to the square of the base length. If we cut the segment's base length in half, we will about quarter our error. We could equivalently say doubling the number of trapezoids we use will cut our error in four. In the top figure here, four trapezoids resulted in an error of 9.2%. And right below that, we doubled the number of trapezoids and we just about quartered our error. This is consistent with the idea that using more trapezoids increases the accuracy of our integral estimate at the expense of computational power. Finally, the trapezoidal rule uses lines to approximate very complex shapes. Therefore, you're almost guaranteed to either overestimate or underestimate in each region. For instance, we underestimate the true integral from 0 to 1, but it looks like we overestimate from 2 to 3. When we use more trapezoids, it becomes harder to tell, resulting in a better estimate. There's a handy built-in MATLAB function called trapz. Trapz accepts one or two inputs. If your x vector contains unit spacing, or a spacing of one, everywhere, you can only supply one argument to trapz. That argument is the y vector. When you only give trap z y, it knows your data contains unit spacing. However, you need to input x to trap z if the spacing is not 1, even if your data is equally spaced. You also need to give x if your data is unequally spaced. When you supply x to trap z, you are explicitly removing the assumption that the x data contains unit spacing you are forcing the algorithm to use whatever spacing is contained within your x vector. Like usual, read the documentation carefully and thoroughly. Let's do a quick example of the composite trapezoid rule with the supplied x and y data in this table. We have four data points, so we can use three trapezoids. One from 0 to 1, one from 1 to 2, and the third from 2 to 3. The x vector is uniformly spaced with a spacing of 1, so that's our h. Mathematically, h equals b minus a over n equals 1, so the math checks out as well. Here's the formula from slide 5. Let's focus on the bracketed term first. We add the y values of our endpoints, aka f of 0 and f of 3, to 2 times the summation of our interior y points. We add f of 0 and f of 3 to twice the sum of f of 1 and f of 2. Afterwards, we multiply the entire bracketed term by h over 2. If you plug in the numbers, you get i equals 79 units. Let's use MATLAB to check. Our x vector contains unit spacing, so we don't need to input it to trap z. After we type in the x and y vectors, we simply call the trap z function as shown. We can see that MATLAB agrees with our hand calculations. Our answer does not change if we include x in the trap z function call, which confirms that our x vector has unit spacing. As a rule of thumb, you should know how to do everything both by hand and in MATLAB in this class. Don't expect to always have access to MATLAB in this class, so be sure you understand the theory as well. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll do a more complex example using the trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data. See you soon.